Thanks for coming, everyone. Um, last time I checked, I was Gary Gronbeck. And um, the story that I'm going to read is a new one, which is going to be published as a uh, chapbook by Endeavor Press uh, this winter. And uh, this is the only time I've ever written a zombie story. And it's, well, it's kind of my take on the zombie story anyway. I tend to not... Uh, I tend to not deal with a lot of the tra traditional tropes of the field, so this was a bit of a bit of a departure for me. This is a story called "We Now Pause for Station Identification." 3:14 a.m. here at WGAB. We gab, folks. That's why it's called talk radio. So if there's anyone listening at this god awful hour, tonight's topic is the same one as this morning, this afternoon, and earlier this evening. In fact, it's the same topic the whole world's had for the last 13 days, if anyone's been counting. Our loved ones, why have they come back from the dead, and what the fuck do they want? Interesting to say fuck on the air without having to worry that the station manager, the FCC, and however many hundreds of outraged local citizens are going to come banging on the door, torches in hand, screaming for my balls on a platter. And to tell you the truth, after being holed up in this booth for five straight days, it feels good, so for your listening enjoyment, I'm going to say it again. Fuck! Look at that. The big F and not one light on this phone is blinking. So much for my loyal listeners. Jesus, come on, people. There's got to be somebody left out there. A goddamn plane flew over here not an hour ago. I know the things don't fly themselves. Okay, okay, there's that whole automatic pilot feature. But the thing is, you've got to have a pilot to get the thing in the air. So I know there's at least one airplane pilot still alive out there. And if there's an airplane pilot, then maybe there's somebody else who's stuck here on the ground like I am. This is the high-tech age, people. Somebody out there has got to have a cell phone. <sighs> Sorry, didn't mean to yell at you folks. Lost my head there for a moment. Look, if you're local, and if you can get to a phone, then please call the station so that I know I'm reaching somebody. I haven't left this booth in five days in that plane earlier. Yeah, it kind of shook me up. <laughs> you would have laughed if you'd been here to see me. I jumped up and ran to the window and stood there pounding on the glass, screaming at the top of my lungs like there was a chance they'd hear me 30,000 feet up. Now I know how Gilligan and the skipper felt every time someone saw a plane that didn't. Jesus, listen to me. It's TV trivia night here at your radio station at the end of the world. You know, the thing that, uh, the thing that shocked me about all of this was that it wasn't a thing like we'd come to expect from all those horror movies. I mean, yeah, sure, the guy who did the makeup for all those Romero movies, what was his name? Uh, Savini, right. Anyway, you got to give a tip of the hat to him, because he sure as hell nailed the way they look. It's just all the rest of it, they, they don't want to eat us. They don't want to eat anything. All righty then, show of hands. How many of you thought the first time you saw them that they were going to stagger over and chew a chunk out of your shoulder? Mine's raised. Anybody else? That's what I thought. Ah, uh, hell, you know, in a way, in a way it would be easier if they did want to eat us, or rip us apart, or something. At least then we'd have some kind of a reason for it, I guess. Something tangible to be afraid of, an explanation for their behavior. And did you notice how quickly all the smarmy experts and talking heads on television gave up trying to offer rational explanations for how they're able to reanimate? Have you ever, when well, one's been close enough, have you ever looked at their fingers? I mean, most of them are shredded down to the bone. Now, people forget that it's not just the coffin down there in the ground. There's a concrete vault that goes into it, that, that it goes into as well. So once they manage to claw their way through the lid of the coffin, they have to get through four inches or so of concrete. At least that's what all the good folks who buried your loved ones have made you pay for. Now think about it, folks. I don't give a hammer horror film shit how strong the walking dead are supposed to be. No way could they break through concrete like that. Not with the levels of decomposition I've seen on some of the bodies. So then, how do you explain so many disturbed and empty graves in all those cemeteries all around the world? Easy. You've been getting screwed. Those vaults that you see setting off to the side during the graveside services? Have any of you ever actually stuck around to watch the rest of it be lowered over the concrete base? Hmm? Shit, it wouldn't cost anything to pour a base underneath the coffin. A lot of us have been getting, been getting scammed, people. And I think it's high time we get together and did something about it. Funeral homes and cemeteries have been charging all of us for a single concrete vault that never actually gets put in the ground. <laughs> Anybody out there got a better explanation for how a moldy, rotting, worm-filled bag of bones can dig its way out of the grave so quickly? If you do, 
you know the number, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Let's bitch. Let's raise hell. Organize a march on all funeral homes and cemetery offices. Uh, but the ones who came out of the graveyards, they're only a part of it, aren't they? Remember the news footage of that Greenpeace boat that went after what they thought was a wounded whale? Only once they got close enough to see that it was dead and had just come back to life, it was too late. One of them had already touched it by then. Christ, how many kids did we lose when they went outside to see that Fluffy or Sprat or Fido or Rover was back from doggy heaven? I smashed a silverfish under my shoe a few days ago, and what was left of it started crawling again. I've got towels rolled up and stuffed under the doors in case there's any ants or cockroaches your friendly neighborhood orchid man might have missed the last time he was here. We're... Were television stations still broadcasting when Sarah Grant came home? Wait a second, some of them had to have been or else I wouldn't remember seeing it, right? Right. Okay. Locals might remember Sarah. She was a, um, she was a four-year-old girl who disappeared about three years ago during the Land of Legend Festival. 10,000 people and nobody saw a thing. The search for her went on for, oh, I don't know how long, before they just had to give up. Well, about two weeks ago, the night all of this first began, what was left of Sarah Grant dug its way out of the grave in its preschool teacher's backyard and walked home. She tried to tell them what had happened, but her vocal cords were long gone. So when the police showed up and saw her, they just followed her back to her teacher's house where she showed them the grave. The police found the teacher hanging from a tree in the backyard. She evidently witnessed Sarah waking up from a dirt nap and knew what was coming. By then, the police had seen more than a few dead bodies get up and start walking around, so little Sarah didn't come as much of a surprise to them. A lot of missing children started showing up at their old homes. Sometimes their families were still living there. Sometimes they moved away and the kids didn't recognize the person who answered the door. Now, this was still when people did answer their doors in the beginning. When we thought it was something that wouldn't happen here, uh, it was just going on in China or what used to be Russia or Ireland or wherever. Everywhere but here, not here, not in the good old U.S. of A. Downright un-American to think that. Christ, there were those idiots who stood up in front of Congress and declared that all of this was just propaganda from Iraq or Hong Kong or Korea. Can you believe that shit? And of course it was all a plot against America because the whole world revolves around us. Fuck that noise. Oh, nations as we know them don't exist anymore, folks. And this is assuming that the entire concept of nations was ever real and not just some incredible, well-orchestrated illusion dreamed up by the shadows who've really been in charge all along. It doesn't matter. It's all just real estate now. Up for grabs at rock bottom prices. Remember how happy a lot of us were at first? All that news footage of people in tears running up to embrace their loved ones fresh from the grave. Mangled bodies pulling themselves from automobile accidents or industrial explosions or recently bombed buildings. All those terrified relatives standing around crash and accident sites, hoping to find their husbands or wives or kids or friends still alive. Reunions were going on left and right. It would have moved you to tears if it hadn't been for a lot of them missing limbs or heads or dragging their guts behind them like a bride's wedding dress train. That didn't matter to the grieving, though. All they saw was their loved ones return to them. They had been spared. They had been saved from a long, dark night of the soul or whatever. They didn't have to give in to that black weight in their hearts. They didn't have to cry themselves to sleep that night. They didn't have to get up the next morning knowing that someone who was important to them, someone they loved and cared about and depended on, wasn't going to be there anymore. No, they were, they were spared that. It didn't take long before we figured out that the dead were drawn back to the places or people they loved most. That meant everything to them while they were alive. At least Romero got that much right in his movies. At first I thought it was just a sad-ass way of reconciling everything, of forcing it into a familiar framework so that we could deal with the, with the reality of these fucking upright corpses shambling back into our lives. Oh, hell, maybe it was just a, I don't know, a knee-jerk reaction on the dead's part, like a sleepwalker. Maybe their bodies were just repeating something they'd done so many times over the course of their lives that it became automatic, something instinctual. I mean, how many times have you been walking home from someplace and haven't even been thinking about how to get from here to there? Your body knows the way, so your brain doesn't even piss away any cells on that one. Home is important, the people are important, and the body knows this, even if you forget. 